In order to make a booklet inside of InDesign, there's a couple of things that you need to do before you even open up InDesign. First of all, you need to organize the information that you're going to use, the text as well as the picture or other elements that you're going to include inside of your InDesign booklet. And I've done this already. On my desktop, you can see there's a folder called Booklet. I open this up. Inside, I have a folder called Text, and I have a folder called Images. Inside the Text folder, I have some uh, plain text documents with different words such as the Star Spangled Banner, uh, Declaration of Independence, various documents that I'm going to put inside of InDesign. If I go up one folder, there's also a folder here called Images. And the Images basically is just a collection of all the images that I'm going to be using. Now, make sure that you keep a reference of the images and the text places that you're using. For this, I just have a text document that says picture sources. That way I know where my pictures are coming from, uh, where I got them from. And in each of the text documents, I have the website address from where I got this text. So with my information organized inside of these folders, I'm going to create a new InDesign document. To open up InDesign, you click on Start, All Programs, Adobe Design Premium CS3, and then you go down to Adobe Design InDesign CS3. Now we're going to create a booklet that is printed on both sides and it's going to be on letter size paper so our design is going to be on half letter size paper. There's a couple of things we need to do in order for this to work successfully. First of all, because it's going to be folded in half and we're going to have uh, the pages on each side of the page we have to make sure that our, our booklet is divisible by four because every page that we have will technically have four pages on it. So when you open up InDesign, this document comes up and we're going to click on Create New Document. Now it says Number of Pages. It has to be divisible by four for this to work out well. I'm going to put in 12 pages for right now. Facing pages means the pages are going to be facing each other. And because we're going to use letter size paper, uh, what we're going to design is letter half and we make sure that the orientation is up that way it uh, the pages will allow us to open and we just want the the orientation set to portrait now for this booklet we're going to cut the edges the outside edge off just a little bit I'm going to unlink my margins margins just create a pink border around the document showing you where things are going to be uh, where Basically, it's a margin area where you want to store your text. So let me just go ahead and make the outside three picas and three pixels. Um, don't worry about the measurements. We'll change these to inches in just a little bit. And I'm going to make the inside as well, three picas, three pixels, or three points actually, inside as well. So our inside and outside are 3P3. We have the orientation set to portrait, letter set to half, and facing pages and we have 12 pages in there we're gonna go ahead and click OK now we have our first page of the document the first thing I recommend doing is saving your document so go ahead and go file save save the document inside of the same folder as the booklet folder for this example it's on my desktop there's a folder called booklet and I'm gonna save this here and I'm just gonna save this as InDesign dash booklet and then I go ahead and click Save. Now I'm going to minimize InDesign and just show you what this does. When you save InDesign it creates an .indd that stands for InDesign document file as well as it creates this temporary file. This temporary file starts with a tilde and this is there if something happens and your computer crashes it's automatically saving your file. You can't open this file, you can't read this file, but what it's doing is it's saving whatever's here. So that's how you get started. Uh, in the next clip, go ahead and watch how you can um, start adding stuff to this. Let's go back to InDesign and see our document there. With InDesign open and set up, ready to go, let's go ahead and go through how we're going to do this. First of all, you have all your tools on the left-hand side. We're not going to go through all of these, but just know you can find them up here. When you're selected on different tools, the options up at the top will change and give you different options how you can edit and do different things with those tools. On the right-hand side, you have panels that give you options as well. You can extend these panels or you can hide the panels if you don't want to see them. 
Extending them shows you more options. Hiding them just shows you the panel name as well as the icon. You can also shrink these down so that you have more space to work. I'm going to keep these out just a little bit more so I have a little bit more space and I can read what their names are. Now, what I want to do, InDesign is designed to create lots of or documents with lots of pages. If you click on pages up here, uh, you can see that there are a lot of different pages. Oh, by the way, if you don't see pages, you can always go up to Window and go down to Pages, and it will bring it up as well. Now, I have my document, and I have all my pages. Before I start typing and I start writing out what everything is, I want to start, I want to design the pages and design how I want it to look before I even get into putting in the text and putting in the pictures. This is why I want this is why it's important to have planning done before you even open up InDesign. So now I have all the text, I have all the pictures that I want to put inside here, but I need to design how I want it to look. To do that, let me close out the pages right here, I'm going to create what's called paragraph styles. Paragraph styles are styles that you can apply to uh, bodies of text and make it uniform all the way throughout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on paragraph styles and I'm going to start defining what my paragraph styles are going to look like even before I start going in and editing everything. So what I want to do is create my styles and I'm going to just click on this new icon right here which is the icon next to the garbage can. It creates a new uh, new style and I'm going to click this a couple of times. I have six different paragraph styles here. They're all created based on basic paragraph styling. Uh, I'm going to select on paragraph style 6. I, I want to double click on it. Don't double click on the word, but just to the left or to the right of it. It comes up with a dialog box letting me change this paragraph style. I'm going to call this one 01 heading. This is going to be the style that I apply to my heading of each area. So I'm going to just hit OK for right now. We're just naming our styles right now. The next style I do, I'm going to call this one 02 subheading. Click OK. The next style I'm going to select, and I'm going to call this one body text. Maybe I want just my body text to look a certain way. I select that one. On the next paragraph style, I'm going to call this one 04 body text drop caps. This way I can add in drop caps to my body text. Now if you notice, I went and I skipped adding 03 to body text. If I rename it, let me show you how to rename it. You just double click on the box and you can rename it here, 03, and click OK. And with paragraph style 2, I'm going to rename this one 05 header. This is going to be for header text that I have at the top of, of various pages. And the last paragraph style, I'm going to rename this one as pull quotes. And I'm going to put 06 in front of it. The numbers in front don't mean anything other than they help me organize and keep keep track of what I'm I'm using each one for. So with that, I go ahead and select OK. Now what I've done is I've created these predefined paragraph styles or methods for creating the text for each of the objects that I'm going to put in here. We're not actually going to go through and, and stylize these texts right now, but what we've done is we've created them so that as we put in the various text in our document, we'll be able to go and apply these styles to them, and then once we've applied the styles, we'll be able to go and uh, adjust how they look and change them to match how we want our document to look. With my paragraph styles set up, I'm now ready to go and start laying out my pages. I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up my pages panel. Now looking at my pages panel at the top, it says none. There's a page here, and then it says A Master, and then there's two pages here, or a spread. Now looking at this, I can see there's a big A on each of these pages. What that is telling me is that each of these pages are designed based on the A Master. Now, I want to have something that's similar through all of the pages, except my first couple of pages are going to be a little bit different. I need to know what my first pages are going to be. I know my first page is going to be a title page, and so I don't want the same design applied to the title page as to my other pages. So what I'm going to do is click on the box or the page next to none, drag it down to page one, 
Now it's taken the A away and it's also taken away the master. Now looking at this, they still look the same. If we scroll down, we can see our pages, page one, page two, page three. They still look the exact same. That's because there's nothing applied to the A master. So let's go ahead and start applying something to the A master. To do that, let's double click on the A master on the left hand side and you can see the page is brought up right here. For this design, what we're going to do is create a line or a bar up at the top, maybe just the title of our document. So I'm going to go ahead, click on the line tool, and I'm going to click and drag over here. Now if I hold the shift key, it locks it in place so into 15 degree increments. I'm going to have this go about three quarters of the way across the page. And I want to add stroke to this or thickness to the line. Right now it, it's at zero points. You can see up at the top. I'm going to make this one, two points. You can also access that by clicking on stroke on the side and you come up with more options as well. But right now I have a stroke applied to my A master. I'm going to click off of that and I'm going to click on the type tool. I'm going to draw a type box up here and I'm going to put in the title of my document. So for right now I'm just going to call it title of document. I can click on the move tool. I can move and I can adjust this wherever I want it to be. I'm going to just put it right there for right now. Now I go back to my pages. I'm on the A master. You can see there's a little bit of squiggle lines down here, but you can see the same thing has been applied to all of the other pages. If I click out of the master and I click on page two, for example, you'll see it says title of document, title of document on page four. But if I scroll over to the right to page five, there's nothing there. So what I've done is I've set up this master page to say that on every left side at the top, there's going to be a line and it's going to have this text there. Now I want to put the page number of every page on the right page. So I'm going to double click on the right master. I scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to insert in another text box. Now for this text box, I'm just going to type in page. Now I don't want to have to go through and number every page every time, especially when I make changes. I want InDesign to do it automatically for me. So to do this, you right click inside of a text box, right click inside of a text box, go up to insert special character, other, oh, I'm sorry, right click right click inside of a text box, go up to insert special character, markers, current page number. There's other ways to do this as well. This is just the way that I do it. And it puts in A because I'm on the A master. Now I'm going to go ahead and select this. I want to move it to the center. To do that, I click up on the paragraph up here at the top and then I can center align the text. The paragraph, just so you know, deals with paragraph text. The A deals with specific uh, characteristics of individual type or characters. So now I've created my A master. I have my bar up at the top that says title of document. I have page A down here on the bottom. Now I'm going to click back on my pages and every page, if I scroll down, that is inside of the A master includes the page number as well as the title of the document. So now we've started the layout of how our document is going to look with the page numbers and the document. And this is going to apply to all of the pages inside this document that are under A master. Now I'm not going to show you how, but you can add more masters if you want to. Simply right click up in this area, create new master, and you can create a B master, you can create a C, you can create multiple masters for different types of layouts that you're going to create within your document. With our basic layout of master A, A master setup and complete, we're ready to start in, uh, putting in our, our content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to page one. Page one is going to be the title of my document. So I'm going to create a text box here and I'm just going to put in the title of my document. Collection of great works. Now I can adjust, I can change this to be however I want it to be, uh, however I want it to look. But right now I'm going to go ahead and just make it 
a little bit bigger so it's easier to read and I'm going to center justify the text. Down below I'm gonna go ahead and draw another text box and I notice how I aligned it so that it touches the margin on the right hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and just put in here created laid out by Mr. Miller and I'm going to align this text to the right hand side which will align it to the right hand side of that box go ahead and select OK. So now my first page is complete I'm gonna to go to page 2 and I look at page 2 if I were opening up a booklet that would be the inside of the page or the page opposite of my title page or my cover usually that page is left blank so I'm gonna go ahead and make that page blank to do that I click on the none uh, for the master I drag it down to 2 and it blanks out that page. Now I'm going to go on to page 3. For page 3 I want to create a table of contents and uh, keep track of where all of my documents are. For right now I'm just going to create a text box inside here and I'm going to call it table of contents and I'm going to resize my text box Later on, we're going to have InDesign help us automate or create a table of contents based on the content we actually have. Now I'm going to go on down to page 4. And this page, it, once again, um, after the table of contents you open, I kind of want to have this page blank and start on the next document or on the next page over. So what I want to do is on this page, I'm going to go ahead and just apply none to this page, which is going to blank it out. I'm going to go over to page 5 right here. I scroll down on page 5 and you can see it's page 5 right there and I want to put in my first uh, my first work so I come over to my booklet and I notice uh, or I look and see which one I want to put in first I have the Declaration of Independence, the Star Spangled Banner I think for this one I want to go ahead and put in the Star Spangled Banner as my first uh, work right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a heading for this I click on my type box and I'm going to go ahead and just draw where I want my type box to be. This is getting in the way so I'm going to close it out. Click on the arrow tool, reselect my type box. Now with my type box selected I want to put in my title. So I click in here the Star Spangled Banner and I'm just going to adjust this up here. Now I'm going to put in another type box right below and for this type box I'm going to put in by Francis Scott Key. So I'm starting to create my text and place it and design it where I want it to be. I can move it around but what I want to do now, now that I have my text, oh let's go ahead and put in the actual Star Spangled Banner text and I'm going to put this in. I'm going to click on the type tool again and I'm going to create a box here in the center. With this box selected I go up to file, place, then I scroll to find the, the file that I've created. So I go inside booklet, I go inside text, and there's the Star Spangled Banner text. I click open. When I have the text open and I have the text box selected, it creates uh, the text for me right here and puts it in. Now looking at this box, if you were to read through, it's not the entire Star Spangled Banner. In fact, it cuts off halfway through the second verse. I can tell that just by looking at this box, do you see there's a plus sign? This plus sign is indicating there's more text uh, in here than what we have space for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this box so it takes up about half the space and I could use a ruler guide if I wanted to get this exactly half. Click on the ruler on the side, you can drag this over and let's say I wanted to get exactly half of this page. I'm going to put it right there for right now. Uh, I'm going to create another type uh, text box. I'm going to click over here. With my second text box created, I can now click on the arrow tool click on the, the red plus sign. Notice how when I do that I get text connected to my cursor. Wherever I'm moving my cursor has text. When I hover my cursor over this white box in InDesign, this is called an inbox, the other one was called an outbox. If I click on this inbox, 
Oops, I didn't quite do that right. Let me try it again. If I just click inside this box, it copies the text inside to this page as well. Now, it still didn't fit inside this page, so I can go about adjusting the size of the boxes, make them a little bit bigger. Now, when I do this, when I link the boxes together, what that does is it makes it so that the, the font will stay linked, stay together even if I add or take away different text, the two boxes are connected. Now obviously we can see that this text doesn't quite fit, but for this I want it to fit just on this page. So for right now I'm going to leave this how this is, I'm going to come back to it in a minute, but before I leave this page what I need to do is I need to apply styles to each of these boxes. So let me show you how to apply styles. First of all, our, our top style, the Star Spangled Banner, we want to uh, apply a paragraph style. We've already created these. I'm going to create this as a heading. I select it, and now Star Spangled Banner is set as a heading. Francis Scott Key, I'm going to select that, and I'm going to make that a subheading. Now right here, for my body text, I'm going to go ahead and select these boxes. To make sure I get all the text, I press Control A on the keyboard. That selects all of the text inside of that box, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to body text. Now, what I've done is I've assigned styles to each of these, uh, to each of these text elements. Go ahead and on your own, put in uh, lay out roughly how we just did the same page, lay out roughly the next couple of pages all the way through page 11 with different uh, texts and you may also use images uh, to lay it out. Now that I've inserted my text and I've assigned paragraph styles to my body text, to my subheading, and to my heading, I need to go and start changing how this looks. First of all, with my heading, I'm going to double click on heading 1, and over here on the left you can see all the options that you can do to this text. So what I want to do first of all, basic, basic character formats, I'm going to click on this one. I want to change the font, because it is a heading, I'm going to change it to a sans serif font, Arial, make it easier to read, and I want the font a little bit larger, so I'm going to change it to 18. I, there's a lot of other options you can do. For right now, we're going to stick with that one. Go ahead and select OK. Now, I've done that, and it's changed the heading, but it also has done it wherever this paragraph was selected. So what I need to do is select inside of this paragraph and change that back to body text. Notice how it adjusts the text, but it also adjusted up here where my heading text was. Now, my subheading text right here subheading 2, I can go ahead and adjust this as well, and I'm going to change this to basic format. I'm going to change it also to Arial, and I'm going to change it to Arial, italic, and I'm going to keep it at po uh, point size 12 right here, and select OK. Now I can move this around wherever I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And looking the, at my body text, I realize the text is too big to fit everything inside here. So what I'm going to do is select inside the body text. You don't have to do this, and I just moved it by accident. Control-Z will undo. Select the text, and then go over here to where it says body text. Double click, and we're going to change the basic character formats to this one. Instead of Times New Roman size 12, let's shrink it down to Times New Roman size 10. Click OK. And now we can see our text has shrunk down, and we can see it a little bit more. We can still see it doesn't quite fit inside our boxes, so I'm going to create these boxes a little bit bigger, and it's still not quite fitting. So what I want to do is I want this to carry over to the next page as well. To do this, I'm going to create a new text box. And if you want the text box to be a specific size, you can, um, with the text box created, I can then click on the out box and grab the move tool. And it carries my text. 
If I click on the space bar on the keyboard, it lets me move through the document, and I'm going to link that text inside here. And I notice all that was left was the source from where I got that text. So I'm going to undo that. I don't need that box there. And I'm going to create a new text box inside this page. Then I'm going to link this box with the text here. And it's showing up red because the text is too big. And I can just move this around. Now you can lay out where you want this text to be. You can use ruler guides to get it to line up. I want both of these boxes to be lined up evenly, so I select both of them by holding the shift key. With them selected, I go up to Window, and then I go down to Object and Layout, and then I go Align, or I press Shift F7 on the keyboard. Now this will allow me to align the objects. I want to align them all, both up at the top, so I can go ahead and do that. Oops, that's this tribute. A line is up here, and notice how it moved the first one so that it's lined up. Now, there's an extra space in here, but with a little bit of tweaking, you can make it look how you want. You can also take this text, and notice how it's kind of jagged, it's right aligned. I can go back and I can change my paragraph styles for the body text, and maybe I want the paragraph body text instead of uh, being formatted uh, to right align. If I click on It is justification right here. Okay, now I've set up one uh, page. I want to set up another page. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down, so I'm on this page. And I want to put inside here, I'm going to go to text, I want to put in the Gettysburg address. Now I showed you before how you could go file place and put the image or put the text inside there. But this time I'm just going to click and drag the text document right into InDesign. This allows me to just put it in and now I can see how big the text is I can move it around and edit it it looks like it fits perfectly what I want to do though is put in the title up here so I'm going to go ahead and do that Gettysburg and I'm going to put in who it was by so I create another text box Now, I can move these around where I want them to be, but before I get too carried away in laying out where I want the text to be, what I need to do is apply the paragraph styles. So for this, the heading, I'm going to go ahead and apply that, the heading to it. I resize it. The subheading, I'm going to apply that to Abraham Lincoln. Now, I want to do something a little bit more. I don't want to just have the Gettysburg address, but I want to have the text in actually inside uh, or a picture of Abraham Lincoln inside I want the text to wrap around the image so I'm going to put in a text or an image box by clicking on this box here with an X in it I click and I drag I can move it wherever I want now I have the image space holding there to put the image in I go file place I go to my images folder and I find the image of Abraham Lincoln. I select open. And now all I see is this fuzzy little area. What has happened if you click on the direct selection tool, then click on the image, you see this brown line. This is showing me how big the image actually is. So I want the image to fit inside of this box here. To do that, I right click, I go down to fitting. Now if I fit content to frame, it's going to squish the image and make sure it fits. I hit undo to control Z to undo that. So if I go down to fitting, I can go fit content proportionally and that will fill it in and that one kind of stretches it out a little bit. If I right click again, go fitting, fit uh, fill frame proportionally, what that does is it fills the image but it leaves blank wherever extra is in the frame or it cuts it off a little bit, you can see there. I can click when I'm on the brown a white arrow tool with the brown selection. I can adjust the photo just a little bit. Now when my photo looks just right how I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and select the photo and I want to change the, the wrapping of the text so that it goes around my photo. To do that you click up here and you can change the image. Now the text is going around 
this image. And if I want to resize this image, notice how if I resize the box, the text wraps, but it cuts off the image. If you press Control, Shift, and you click on the corner, it will resize the image as well as keep the proportions the same. And I'm going to move this up here, maybe just on the side, right about there. And so you can see we have the Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln. And I don't think I've set this. Oh, yep, this is set to body text. And I have my subheading. I have my heading. So now I have my second, second page finished. On your own, add in an article, images, or whatever you, whatever you want to the remaining pages up until page 11. Make sure that on these pages you add the heading text and make sure you designate it a heading under paragraph styles. Create a subheading if you wish, designate it as such, and then create a body text. Go ahead and do that so that you have text in each of the pages that you want to have your story. So I have the Declaration of Independence created and I put an image in as a background and I drop the opacity down so that it's just in the background of those pages. I dropped it down to 15% up here. You can see that and it just goes and I want to put in uh, what I want to do is I want to change the first letter of each paragraph inside the body text of the Declaration of Independence so that it has um, so that it has drop caps. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and go into my paragraph styles, go to where it says body text drop caps. I'm going to double click on that one. Now I, what I want to do is go down to where it says drop caps and nested styles. Now it says drop caps, lines. What I want this to be, I want it to drop down, let's say three lines. And I only want the first letter of each uh, paragraph to do that. So I'm going to click OK. Now all I need to do is apply the drop ca caps to my Declaration of Independence. So I press Control A. It selects all my text for the Declaration of Independence. I go to drop text. And you can see it's gone through. A couple of the first paragraphs don't need it, but the rest of them, you can see it's automatically put in the drop caps for each of the lines. I can go through and I can adjust this. Maybe I realize that's too much. I double click, go back to where it says drop caps. Maybe I want it to go to just two lines and I click OK and it automatically updates it. Now for these paragraphs, I want to switch that back to just normal paragraphs. And now you can see I have automatic drop caps inside of my paragraphs. So this is going to take a little bit of tweaking. Also notice that it added um, a red box to the end, which means I have more text than space. I'm just going to click over here and it pastes it in. And you can see there's a little bit more. And I'm going to leave it at that for right now. But you can see by just changing the styles, you can go through and change how the look of your entire document looks simply by clicking and changing. If I wanted the, the headings of each section to change, I could change this and I'm going to do something here. Uh, I go to basic character formatting. Maybe I wanted to go ahead and just, let's just change it a lot uh, instead of Arial. Maybe I wanted my headings to be something like Cambria. Select OK and it automatically adjusts it for everywhere I have that style set up. So for this uh, booklet, what you need to do is set up your styles, figure out what you want things to look like before you actually go into the design or the creation of it and it will make things a lot easier. Now that you've created a document or a booklet using paragraph styles, you can create and add a table of contents. So I'm going to go up to page three where I have my table of contents set and what I'm going to do is go up to layout, table of contents, a dialog box pops up and let me just remove these. This is what it should look like. Now what it's, get, what it's telling you is first of all uh, you have just a default set for table of contents. I want to give it a title so I'm going to call it table of contents. 
put that in there so you can tell it's mine. Now, what I need to do is I need to tell InDesign how to read where my table of contents is uh, or how to know where to indicate new sections. So what I'm going to do is go over to my other styles and I have my headings. I'm going to add that as well as my subheading. I click and I add that. Now down below, if I click on heading, it says entry style and it gives me a style that I can change what it looks like and it says page number after entry you can change it to before entry or no page number we're going to change it to after entry and go ahead and select OK now it asks if you want to include overset text I'm just going to click yes now I click and I have a table of contents created I know that on page 5 is the Star Spangled Banner the Gettysburg Address is on page 6 looking at who these things are by I don't necessarily need to see the page number the same place so all I need to do is go back to my um, table of content style if you go up to layout table of content styles and if I click on edit right here I can change the subheading I don't want to have a page number afterwards so I click OK click OK now you can see the page number oops let me just do that again layout table of content style I'm going to edit this actually I'm just going to remove the subheading for right now but this is where you would experiment with going through and changing this. Oh, I remember why. So I've changed it. Now what I need to do is go up to layout, update table of contents. Yes. And it will update the table of contents to show what we've done. So that's how you go through and you update it. And the same thing, after you add and take away various pages, all you do is you go update table of contents and it'll update it for you. Now looking at this, uh, the table of contents starts on page five because that's page three. So we have our table of contents set up, but we have page three on the table of contents, and our first uh, work actually starts on page five. So what we need to do is go through and figure out how to fix that. If you click on pages, and you go down to page five, right click, go down to where it says numbering and section options, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new section and instead of automatic page numbering, we're going to start page numbering at 1. We select OK. Now if we scroll, if you notice, it says page 1. Let me just zoom in here so you can see that. Page 1. Page 3. So it goes through and it's updated our page numbers simply by right-clicking on the page and changing um, numbering and section options. Now, for the beginning, we have our table of contents up here and it says page 3. We can remove that by changing the style to none. We drag that down to right here, our table of contents, and it gets rid of it. We could also change that if we wanted our first pages that exist to be Roman numeral, numerals, let's say. You can also do that here by start page numbering and you can change this to Roman numerals. Now they don't show up, but they do show up here, I, 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 and then it goes into one, two, and it just starts over again. So right here on this board, we just make sure there's no uh, page shown and it'll show up. Now with our table of contents, once we've done this, we can make whatever changes. Maybe we add or we subtract pages, but now it's no longer on page five. So you click inside the table of contents, go up to layout, update table of contents. Yes. And it's gone through and it's updated the layout of our table of contents. So that's a quick reference to show you how you can go through and lay out a booklet uh, for creating a booklet. Now when you're finished with your booklet, save it inside the same folder that you've been saving it and then ask Mr. Miller how you are supposed to print out the booklet correctly. Printing a booklet from InDesign can be a little confusing at first. 
In this video, I want to demonstrate how to print a booklet. First, I recommend that you have a multiple of four in your InDesign document and that your document is designed in half letter size paper. If you don't have a multiple of four, I would recommend putting in blank pages where you want blank pages to appear. Otherwise, InDesign will add in blank pages where it thinks that they are necessary. It will be much better if you add in the blank pages on your own. If it is designed in full paper, uh, full letter size paper, you may follow the same steps in this video. You will just have to use tabloid size paper when printing while I will be using letter size paper. Depending on your printer, you may or may not be able to print double sided. Some printers even have a stapling feature and will staple your booklet for you. For this demonstration, I will be using an Adobe print driver to make a PDF of my booklet so you can see what the booklet would look like. Right now I have a sample booklet with 12 pages inside of it and I also have a couple of pictures. I have a picture that spans across page 4 and page 5 as well as a picture that spans between page 6 and page 7. I want to print this as a booklet. Uh, basically I'm going to fold this in half and have it work like a booklet. In order to print this booklet go up to File. Your first inclination may be to click on Print, but if you do this it's going to print each page individually. That's not what we want. What we want to do is print two pages on every side of each sheet of paper. That way we can fold the, pa the paper in half and we'll have a book or a booklet from what we've done. Instead of choosing Print, go down to Print Booklet and we're going to see here is our setup. We can see there's a preset. It's, right now it's just set to Custom. There are, yours may be set to a different one. I chose to use an Adobe PDF. You can change the print settings down here, which we're going to do in a minute. We're going to do a booklet type two-up saddle stitch. You can see there's a couple other options, but a two-up saddle stitch basically allows you to fold the paper in half and put two staples or stitches inside of the booklet. Now I want to click on preview to see if everything is correct and the preview is showing me what is going to print out on each of the pages. And right now I can see that page 12, the back cover, is going to print on the same page as page 1. But I also can see this red area indicating that half of my page is going to be cut off. That could be problematic. If I click on the summary, it's going to tell me the summary of everything that's printing. But I want to go back to preview. I need to fix this. To fix this, or to change the printer that you're using, simply click on print settings. This brings up a lot of options. I have my printer set to an Adobe PDF which is going to allow me to create a PDF from this uh, document and what I want to do is make sure that print blank pages is selected. Inside of my booklet I do have one blank page and if I don't select this, I'm going to uncheck it real quick, it may mess up the way my pages are distributed inside of this document. And so I'm going to make sure that my print settings have print blank pages set up. Now I want to change the orientation of my print so that it fills this page. I click on Setup. I'm going to change the orientation so now that it's going to be landscape. It's not going to update until I click OK. But this is also the location where you can change the page size. Let's say that you made your booklet design using letter size paper. If you did that, you can change your paper here to use tabloid or 11 by 17. Let me show you. 11 by 17 would be tabloid. But because I used half letter size paper, I can use that. And now when I click OK, it's going to fix the rotation of the paper. So now it's going to print on one sheet of paper page 1 and page 12. You can see these blue numbers indicate what pages are being printed. I can now click through and I can see my other pages that would be printed as well. Now I put two pictures inside of this document for a purpose. Notice here how page 4 doesn't line up with page 5. The reason is these pages are going to be next to a different page and the way that the booklet will be stapled is going to shuffle the order of these pages. If I click over to the next one, you can see there is the second half of that same picture. Now if I go to page 6 and 7, they have the picture connected together. And the reason is, this is going to be the innermost page or the inside of my booklet. So if everything looks correct, I can go ahead and click on Print. 
Now using the Adobe driver, I'm going to have this window pop up and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Sample Booklet. I'm going to save it. And now you can see I have the front page will print out front cover, back cover. The next page will have page 2 as well as page 11 which was blank. Page 10 and page 3. Page 4 and page 9. Page 8 and page 5. Page 6 and page 7. Now I can print these out inside of my printer. If your printer supports double sided it may have something called duplex and it may give you an option to print open the book to the left or from the top. Now in this case you would want to print open from the left because that's the way that your book opens up. It will keep all your text right side up. If you do open from the top it's actually going to flip every other page and it's going to be upside down. Go ahead and experiment with your printer. If you're doing a big or a large booklet, I would recommend practicing with just a small booklet or just practicing with four pages and see if you can get that correct before you try printing a larger booklet. I hope this video has helped you in figuring out how to print a booklet using InDesign.